Earth is an incredible planet on which we live. It has many secrets and exciting things that can surprise even the most curious viewers. In this video, we will tell you about some of them that can change your idea of our home planet. Before you continue, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with friends. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Rings of the Earth According to the most popular and generally accepted hypothesis of the Moon's formation, four and a half billion years ago, the planet their year, descending due to unknown factors from the Lagrange point L4 of the Earth's orbit, collided with the proto-Earth. The collision caused a large amount of matter to be released into the Earth's orbit, which formed a ring that eventually merged due to gravity and created a moon. But this would not have happened if this ring of debris had formed on Roche's limit. Then, it would be possible for the Earth to have large rings instead of its lonely companion even today. Roche limit is a minimum distance from the planet on which its satellite can exist, while it will avoid tidal forces that can destroy it. This means that if our moon had an orbit too close to Earth, the planet's gravitational influence would tear it to pieces. And if there were a ring at such a distance, then it wouldn't be able to form any satellites. Milankovitch Cycles The Earth's orbit approximates an ellipse. Eccentricity measures the departure of this ellipse from circularity. The shape of the Earth's orbit varies between nearly circular and mildly elliptical. Eccentricity varies primarily due to the gravitational pull of Jupiter and Saturn. However, the orbital ellipse's semi-major axis remains unchanged, according to perturbation theory, which computes the evolution of the orbit. The semi-major axis is invariant. Another Milankovitch cycle is axial precession. It is the trend in the direction of the Earth's axis of rotation relative to the fixed stars, with a period of about 25,700 years. Also known as the precession of the equinoxes, this motion means that eventually, Polaris will no longer be the North Pole star. This precession is caused by the tidal forces exerted by the Sun and the Moon on the rotating Earth. Both contribute roughly equally to this effect. Milankovitch is known for combining changes in some parameters of rotation and motion of the Earth with global changes in the planet's climate, which helps create a mathematical model for calculating climatic conditions on Earth. Small changes caused by Milankovitch cycles, acting together significantly, affect the Earth's climate, but over very long periods. The Moon is not the only natural satellite of the Earth. Currently, everyone knows that the only natural satellite of the Earth is the Moon. However, the existence of other satellites was repeatedly put forward by astronomers in the 19th and first half of the 20th century. The search led almost to nothing, but several near-Earth objects are considered the second satellites of the Earth. Asteroids whose orbits resonate with the Earth's orbit can be called second satellites. They are called quasi-satellites. One of them is Kruthni. It moves in an orbital resonance with Earth, but simultaneously revolves around the Sun. In addition to quasi-satellites, the Earth, with its gravity, can capture temporary satellites whose orbit is unstable. An example of such a satellite is the asteroid 2006 RH120. In the mid-19th century, Frederick Petit observed Bolides, trying to calculate their orbits. He often published reports on the results of his observations in various popular magazines. There, he described that some of the fireballs he observed from his calculations had an elliptical orbit, thus being satellites of the Earth. However, this hypothesis was not recognized. In the late 19th century, Georg Waltermath repeatedly claimed to have discovered a second satellite of the Earth and later a third, but these discoveries were never confirmed. Eclipse. What could be so special about solar eclipses? 
Everyone knows that the moon revolves around the Earth and is in the ecliptic plane, which allows it sometimes to cover the sun. This leads to such a phenomenon as a solar eclipse. Or it can plunge into the Earth's shadow and lead to a lunar eclipse. Interestingly, this phenomenon, although periodic, does not occur every month. But why? Conspiracy theorists and proponents of a flat moon nailed to the celestial sphere theory often mention this. Our moon's orbit is inclined to the ecliptic plane slightly, 5.14 degrees. It is not a significant angle, but the difference is quite noticeable at a distance of 380,000 kilometers, where the moon is. Therefore, the moon can pass 37,000 kilometers above or below the central part of the Earth's shadow. Thus, our satellite passes the Earth's shadow and the moon's eclipse does not occur. In this case, there are points where the moon's orbit intersects with the ecliptic plane. These points are called lunar nodes. A solar and lunar eclipse occurs when a new moon passes through one of these nodes. In addition, these nodes are also moving. This is why eclipses of the moon and sun do not occur every full moon orbit around the Earth. During the year, from two to five eclipses of the sun occur on Earth, of which no more than three are complete eclipses. On average, a total eclipse occurs once every 370 years in the same place. But there are exceptions. The Earth is not round. Few people know, but our planet is not spherical. Depending on the purpose of the description, different models of the shape of the Earth are used, and not all of them are quite spherical. The roughest form of description of the figure of the Earth is a sphere with a diameter of 6,367 kilometers. For most problems of general Earth science, this approximation is sufficient to use in the description or study of some geographical processes. However, with a more precise approach, the figure of our planet is equated to an ellipsoid. This model is used in geodesy to calculate coordinates, build cartographic networks, calculations, etc. Another most approximate form of the Earth is geoid. A geoid is a surface with an irregular complex shape, unlike the ellipsoid surface, and it is still much smoother than the physical surface of the Earth. Most often, this model is used in cartography and geodesy. The highest mountain of the Earth. The answer to the question of which is the Earth's highest peak is obvious. This is Everest. But Everest will not always be the leader, depending on how you define the highest mountain. Its height is 8,849 meters above sea level, which makes Mount Everest the highest mountain on Earth. In this case, it has the highest altitude above sea level. Still, the foot of the inactive volcano Mauna Kea is located at a depth of about 6 kilometers below sea level, and the peak is about 4 kilometers above sea level. The total distance from the foot of the mountain to the top is 10,203 meters. This makes Mauna Kea the highest mountain on the Earth. In addition, Mauna Kea has become an ideal location for an astronomical observatory. We already know that the Earth does not have a perfect sphere shape, but its diameter is largest near the equator. The grey dotted line is an ideal circle in the current diagram, and the solid blue line represents the Earth's shape. Ecuador's highest peak, an inactive Chimborazo volcano, is near the equator. It is where the diameter of the Earth is greatest. The height of the mountain is 6,263 meters above sea level. Considering the Earth's equatorial radius, the top of Chimborazo becomes the highest point relative to the center of the Earth. Geomagnetic reversal. Earth's magnetic field is a shield from cosmic radiation that protects life on the planet. Without it, we would experience a lot of radiation from the sun and our atmosphere could freely flow into space. This probably happened to Mars. Mars had a fragile magnetic field, so the planet was hit by solar wind. 
the solar wind, made the planet's atmosphere uninhabitable. Geomagnetic reversal refers to the Earth's magnetic field flipping process, causing the magnetic north and south poles to switch places. Scientists believe this has been observed from four to five times over the past 10 million years. The last geomagnetic inversion occurred 780,000 years ago. Inversion is an unpredictable phenomenon and lasts an extremely long time. Mathematical modeling suggests a reversal can take one to several thousand years. By geological standards, it's fast, but on a human scale, very slowly. This phenomenon carries almost no danger. The Earth's magnetic field will gradually weaken during this process, but not completely disappear. The Earth's magnetic field confers only some, not complete, resistance to particle radiation from space. The atmosphere of the Earth acts as an additional protection. Animals and humans have been on Earth for millions of years. There have been many reversals, and there is no obvious correlation between human development and inversion. Similarly, inversion schemes do not coincide with animal species extinction patterns during the Earth's geological history. Earth Day does not last 24 hours. Not so many people know, but in fact, there are different days, stellar day and solar day. The stellar age is the interval between the two successive upper culminations of the vernal equinox, lasting 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. The solar age is the interval between two consecutive climaxes of the sun's center and on the same geographical meridian. The solar day lasts 24 hours. The discrepancy of just 4 minutes per month adds up to 120 minutes, or 24 hours per year. That means stellar days in the year are more than solar for a whole day. Since real solar time does not go very evenly due to the unevenness of the visible annual movement of the sun along the ecliptic and the very inclination of the ecliptic to the equator, this time is not convenient for our use. Therefore, the average solar time was introduced, which we use a single continent, supercontinent Pangaea. About 200 million years ago, all continents were joined into a giant supercontinent known as Pangaea. Subsequently, this supercontinent broke up into six continents and five oceans. We know that they were together, not only because the continents fit together like a puzzle, but also because scientists found the same types of rocks on the west coast of Africa and the east coast of South America. This means that they must have formed when the continents were together. Scientists also found the same species of plants and animal fossils on both coasts. We understand that plants cannot swim in the ocean. Why did people not believe in the existence of Pangaea? As early as the 18th century, people thought that the size and shape of the continents were the same for millions of years. In other words, if you looked at a modern map of the world and compared it to a map that is millions of years old, you would see that they are almost the same. No one believed that all continents broke away from each other, with the exception of some scientists. One of them is the Austrian geologist Eduard Zeus, who theorized the idea of supercontinents in 1861. He suggested that our whole world was simultaneously connected as one giant continent Gondwana. He also put forward the theory that there was one giant ocean, Ocean Tethys. German geographer Alfred Wegener introduced the idea of dividing the world into continental shelves and, in 1912, put forward the concept of the supercontinent Pangaea. He also introduced the idea that 200 million years ago, Pangaea was torn apart. It was the tectonic plate that caused continental drift. Today, we know several more supercontinents before the formation of Pangaea, such as Colombia and Rodinia. According to some forecasts, in 200-300 million years, all continents will again form a supercontinent, the Pangaea Ultima. 
age of the Earth. Scientists believe that the age of the Earth is approximately 4.6 billion years. These data are based on radioisotope dating of terrestrial samples and meteorite matter. Just imagine life was on our planet between 4.4 and 3.6 billion years ago. The first humans appeared on Earth about 2 million years ago. It was Homo habilis, or handyman. But the most exciting thing is that if the Earth's entire history is compressed to 24 hours, then Homo habilis appeared at about 23 hours, 59 minutes and 22 seconds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to Infinity Chronicles. Thank you for your time and attention. See you again.